Hey there, my name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and this is my review of Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance played on PC via the Xbox Game Pass. This is not a sponsored review, I subscribe to the Game Pass for £1, not a bad introductory offer if I say so myself, because I was interested in playing this game. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 1 and 2 were some of my favourite games back in the day, and I also read a lot of the Icewind Dale Drizzt books. So what is Dark Alliance? Well the easiest way I can think to describe it would be a weird mix between Dark Souls and Vermintide. The hub and mission system is straight out of Vermintide, along with you know getting all your items at the end of the level. And the combat is vaguely like Dark Souls, at least in so much that it has stamina, rolls, blocks, parries, and the triggers are used for attacks. This isn't a Souls game or a Souls clone though, just similar controls by default, of course you can change them if you prefer. You pick between four characters and then work your way through missions, fighting enemies, solving the occasional puzzle, and so on. Mostly though, it's fairly linear progression, smacking lots of enemies. Each character has two abilities that can be equipped at a time, and you can unlock a few more abilities. Ranged attack, light attack, heavy attacks, and more that can be unlocked, such as tap forward and heavy attack, or hold light attack, stuff like that. And of course, ultimate attacks. Drizzt, and I'm going to pronounce it Drizzt, the game uses Drist, the character has been officially referred to by the author in the books as Drist, Dritz, and Drizzt. I think Drizzt is the best sounding one, so I'm going to use Drizzt. He's a dark elf assassin kind of thing, dual scimitars and some light magic attacks, his ultimate being summoning his panther companion, which I'm going to call Gwen Hyver, because who cares at this point? and Gwen will go ballistic on enemies. Wolfger is the two-handed weapon chap. He can stun enemies, send them flying, do high damage, and his ultimate is spinning around really fast. Catty Bree, well, she kinda sucks, frankly. She's a bow user who can kick enemies as well, but she seems superfluous as she doesn't really bring much to the table, and from what we've been seeing with me and my friends, she just kinda isn't great. She can heal is one of her abilities, but it has a cooldown, and the final character, Bruno the Dwarf, he can also heal. Now, granted, it takes a bit longer to heal, but it doesn't have a cooldown. And he can also heal as one of his abilities. He's a tanky support character, and he's the one I've been playing, because I like dwarves. Frankly, from what we've seen, Wolfgar and Bruno just seem like the best characters, but this could just be the way we're playing them as well, who knows. The game is co-op, and that's definitely the way to play. Story-wise, it slots in somewhere early in the Icewind Dale books, has the Companions of the Hall seeking the Crystal Shard. If you've read the books, you might get a kick out of the story and hearing and seeing some of the places and characters, but otherwise it's not really all that noteworthy. In fact, if you've not read the books or have some prior knowledge, you're probably just going to be like, what is going on? I don't understand a thing. The game also has a lot of cutscenes that aren't there to really give you any story information. They're just there to give you flavour for the level that you're currently on. You know like how at the start of Vermintide or Left 4 Dead, you get like a sweeping shot through the level, like, oh, this is the flavour of the level. It's kind of like that. But yeah, they throw a lot of words and terms at you, and if you don't, you know, know about Dungeons and Dragons or Icewind Dale, you'll be like, sure, whatever. But again, story isn't a big draw, it's a co-op dungeon crawler, and that is the draw. And, well, it's not a great game. It's buggy. It's very buggy. Hitboxes for enemies are probably my biggest problem in this game. <laughs> <It's bullshit. laughs> like watching <laughs> What the f***? They are really bad hitboxes. There will be so many times where an enemy is like looking the other way, then hits you. Probably half the sentences you say when you're playing this game will be something along the lines of what? How did that hit me? Stuff like that. Difficulties all over the place. Some bosses are pushovers, some enemies are pushovers, and you can really face roll a lot of it. But then you will also come across, say, well, one example, we fought a boss early in the game who was able to teleport across the entire boss arena with no cooldown in every single corner. And not only that, but he teleports behind you and insta kills you. He's like Donut Steel, teleports behind you, nothing personal, kid. 
we had no idea how to really deal with it. Sometimes blocking seemed to work, other times it just didn't. Likewise, dealing damage is good, but sometimes it's better to just find a way to insta-kill enemies by knocking them off ledges, or pushing them into walls, or just chain knocking them down. We killed some of the bosses like this by just kind of shoving them into a wall where they would be insta-killed as they touched a out-of-bounds kill area. In general, it's a janky game. The bugs aren't limited to the gameplay. There's a decent amount of menu and presentation ones as well. For example, when we start the game up, we go into options, voice chat, off, because, you know, we're using third-party, out-of-game communications because it's better quality and, you know, all that. But then after every mission, voice chat would turn itself back on for mysterious reasons. There's also no way to invite your friends in the game. If you're playing like we were through the Xbox app, you have to invite them through the Xbox app. For me, this meant bring up the Xbox app, go to social, right click on a friend, and do invite to game. Problem is, there's a 50-50 chance when I right click on someone, the Xbox app will just crash completely for no discernible reason. And I can do this consistently, it's literally 50-50. Because I'm playing with two friends, the first one I can invite, the second one it will crash, then I have to reopen the app and do it again. It's not a problem with the game, it's just the Xbox app. Having an invite system in the game itself would have been nice. You can play online with your friends or you can quick match with random players, but I don't know how mm, good that would be. Thankfully we didn't have much in the way of game breaking bugs or progression blockers. We did have one bug that made it a bit hard to progress, but it wasn't too hard to fix, thankfully. Honestly, this is not a great game, but it's kind of funny and kind of fun, and I like the characters because, you know, I kind of grew up reading these books. The bugs at times were just hilarious, and not really a bug, but the physics in this game are also hilarious. Sometimes you slap an enemy and they will just be launched off into the horizon at like 50 miles per hour, which I love. The seed of a good game is here, somewhere, and at times you can see the potential. It's kind of buggy and doesn't live up to its potential. The animations though, I will give them props, for the animations are surprisingly good for this sort of game. Usually, if it's like a western action dungeon crawling game, all of the animations will have like no weight behind them and kind of suck. I do have to point out, turn off camera shake the moment you start this game and you will have a much nicer time. The camera shake is not good at all. This is the perfect example of a game I would have rented for a weekend back in the day. You know, actually that's what we did with Dark Alliance, although I own Dark Alliance because I loved that game so much, but those kind of rentable games don't exist these days. But all the same, if you can pick it up for cheap and play it with your friends or on Game Pass or something like that, I would definitely suggest giving it a go if you like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons dungeon crawling. I also believe it's not a full price game in that it's not 60 or 70 dollars, I think it's more like 40 dollars. So props to them for that, but yeah, it's, it's just hard to suggest paying at the moment full price for this game. I'm hoping the developers will stick with the game and patch it and improve it because I really do think there's some good potential here for a fun game. If they are gonna keep going at it, I'd like them to release, you know, some more DLC levels and maybe some DLC characters. Artemis, uh, what's the name, Artemis and Shreary? He'd be fun to play as. And Montolio, the kind of the namesake of this channel, the Mont in Silver Mont, comes from Montolio from the early Drizzit books, because I really liked Montolio as a character, so I kinda stole his name, I guess. On the bright side though, sometimes it's nice to play through a simple game that's just about smacking things and exploring. There's no live service, there's no weekly and daily quests you have to worry about doing, just pick up your hammer, crack some goblin skulls, find a bigger hammer that shoots out lightning every time you swing it. As for performance and visuals, the game ran fine for me, nothing to note there. Visuals were, they were fine, I guess. The characters were really ugly, but the environments looked decent enough. But if you have any questions I didn't answer here, ask them in the comments down below and I will get back to you ASAP. Until next time, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you real soon. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm just floating in the air now. Why am I just floating here? Why are we stuck together? Yeah, what the fuck's happened?
Did they give us some sort of special debuff? <laughs> Don't just fucking... I guess, I guess Alex and I are stuck together now. I'm like you in guys the are stuck together. I'm like stuck all the way over here, getting sucked into this wall. What's... <laughs> oh god, I'm spinning up and down. Oh, am I free? Oh, your body's just bouncing. Your body's just going like boing. I'd love to go and revive. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? How does this happen? 